So, on April 1st, I posted kind of a, a Fool's Day video saying that I found uh, Ethernet hardware inside the CSP. No, there's no Ethernet hardware inside the ESP. But, you can totally just talk 10 base T Ethernet and software without any problems. This here is one of the little demo boards I have with the driver and magnetics and a, a little uh, uh, jack on the end. This totally talks Ethernet and it's almost legit. But, there's totally a jankier way of doing it such as with this board right here. This board, all I have is just an Ethernet plug wired up to some resistors and some capacitors and the ESP. I actually did a lot more research with this over the last one day and uh, found out that I can do things a lot better on even this janky board. Whereas before I was getting like 60% packet loss, now it's significantly better. Now I can ping, or actually let's just visit the, visit the page right now, that would be uh, visit the console and we can see that it loaded fairly quickly and the rate that it's updating at is almost as fast as the other one if not as fast let's see here it's around 700 Hertz so yeah even on the janky board which I really recommend not using it's still updating very quickly uh, you can do the same sort of features with the last packet one thing I didn't show though was the GPIO feature I can click on these GPIOs here and they will click the, the LEDs on and off on the, uh, the ESP board right next to me. So if you want to look at that, see how it's blinking on and off? Whee! I'm an LED! And if you look back on the screen, I can click this little button right here, and it's, it's bi-directional. So this is just a, an example of something you can do straight through Ethernet with the ESP. This is with the Wi-Fi on my laptop completely, totally disabled. So, it's not like I'm cheating or anything here. That's not really what I wanted to show you, though. What I wanted to show you was, sure, we can actually, uh, oops. We can actually ping it, but there's something neat. In a previous video, I showed you how I used an antenna to get rid of some extra noise. Turns out the antenna is not needed anymore ever since I found out you can put a capacitor on the input. But I left it there for something interesting. So I'm using ping with a specific pattern. If I change the pattern, you don't hear anything. But if I make it 0, zero you can hear it. Now you might wonder, why can we hear it? Well, over here, on uh, Adam's laptop, we're running RTL-SDR and we're looking at 150 megahertz on just the AM band. And uh, what we're actually receiving is just some of the noise that's coming off of that stupid wire. 150 megahertz noise, which is totally outside of the band of what we're actually after. So, I was like, that's interesting. I can actually go create sound with every single packet. I'm actually sending these packets at, let's see, 500 hertz? And so it's around a 500 hertz tone. What I can do from here, though, is I've modified CNPing, the tool that shows a graph of network uptime and, and whatnot, to be able to be controllable on the fly. This is available, whoa, this is available on the GitHub for CNPing. But right here, you can see that as the packets go on by, they, the good packets, the bad packets, they scroll from left to right. I can control the size of the packet, EPS, so I can make the payload of the packet huge, 1400 bytes or really small, only six. And from left to right, I can control the speed that it's pinging the packets out. Now it's sending out a new packet every 4 milliseconds, whoops, around 4 milliseconds, and you can kind of hear, let's, uh, let me turn it off here, get a little bit clearer. What you can kind of hear is I change the speed in which I'm pinging, that changes the, uh, the, the, the pitch. I can also lock the frequency, and I can change the size of the packets and you can get kind of this interesting PWM tone feel. Also, you can see as I use larger packets, it takes longer for the ESP to respond to them. So if I start transmitting 13 or 1400 byte packets, it takes it almost three to four milliseconds to actually go respond to all those packets. One of the neat things is in this mode with the PWM, I can go change that, but I can also play notes.
the way this is working is because this thing right here is sending out pings to the ESPD266, there's a whole lot of extra noise on the line that's creating a lot of disruption that is being picked up in the AM band by the RTL SDR sitting over here. So this is kind of an interesting way we can almost hear the Ethernet packets. Well, I hope to make some more videos about the ESP8266 and uh, Ethernet, because now that it can actually do it, go figure. Why not? Hope you guys liked it. It's going to be a freebie for all the Patreon people, and uh, stay tuned.